As I'm writing this, just over a week ago, Vex unveiled the new game for the 2020 to 2021 season, Change Up. The game entails lifting balls into these circular goals, and I have built a very simple prototype design. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and without further ado, let's get into it. This design was intended to be an extremely simple design. The obvious choice was to build a lift like a 6 bar or something, but that seemed too simple and too similar to Pippin, my early season robot for Tower Takeover. My original thought was to have some rollers similar to what we had in Turning Point that would intake the balls and move them up to a funnel that would push them out of the bot. But that quickly got too complex, and without a team to support me due to the ongoing global happenings and trying to fit in building alongside preparing for college and finishing up senior year, I decided to scale back my ambitions. My next thought was a vertical tread setup, but that had problems pushing the balls out into the goals. Speaking of goals, here's my prototype game elements. I haven't bought pieces yet, so I used my 3D printer to print some simple balls before the official CAD had come out, and I discovered that the short towers from Tower Takeover were basically the right height for the goals. A few zip ties and some cardboard later, and we have a backboard. We can't practice descoring from the bottom, but this should be good enough for now. The robot itself is based on this extremely small chassis, which does have some problems with tipping, but this bot is just a proof of concept and will never actually be competing, so I'm not going to fix it. It'll just get completely rebuilt again some other time. It is 4 motor direct drive, 200 RPM, the works. The intake and scoring mechanism is mounted to these two long pieces of C-channel. Due to the fact that an 18-inch cube can fit a diagonal strut of over 20 inches, we had to combine some C-channel together. I simply boxed a couple of shorter struts together to reach this length. These struts are connected to the chassis using pillow block bearings, which was a holdover from an earlier iteration which used a tilting 4-bar. To keep everything rigid, I'm completing the triangle using these struts made from the common standoff with threaded rod into shaft collar trick, and the shaft collars are screwed directly into the C-channel. This can damage your screws if you aren't careful, but if you aren't worried about it, it works pretty well. The rollers, however, are the most important part of this robot. These are designed in a pretty different way to rollers like what we had last year for Tower Takeover. Instead of having rubber fins, which rely on a lot of compression to move the balls or cubes or whatever you're trying to pick up, we're using standoffs. There are these treads that have screw holes in them, and we just connected standoffs to be used as the fins. These actually work relatively well, catching the balls and picking them up sometimes, and other times they just push the balls away. That's something to be looked at at a future revision, but of course this is just a prototype. I don't have enough treads to fill the whole chain, so I'm actually just using normal chain connected to these tread links, which works extremely well. The rollers have this connector at the back which holds both the C-channel that the balls rest on and prevents the rollers from moving out. Because it is just a plate and not C-channel or a rail or something, it can bend a little bit, but that shouldn't be a big deal because of course this is just a prototype. The rollers can fit maybe four balls within with one sitting right at the top. I only printed two just because it takes up a lot of PLA to print these things, but you should get a pretty good idea from these. An interesting side effect of the extremely long standoff fins is the extremely fast tip speed. As illustrated by the drum on Blast Wave, my Antweight Combat Robot, if you have a spinning object, the interior is spinning at one speed, right on the axle, it's basically nothing. But on the edge, in this case the screws uses impacting teeth, more distance needs to be covered in a single rotation, which means that the edge needs to spin faster than the interior. This is what causes the standoff tips to be moving so much faster. This actually tends to throw the balls a couple of feet, and these are just the 1 to 1 200 RPM motors. Imagine what it would do if we changed to 600 RPM motors. It's a good thing that the goals have a sort of backboard because that really helps with getting the balls into the goal. It can be quite difficult to drive simply due to having the intake on one side and the output on the other. This is pretty similar, however, to the ridiculously named Butternut Squash, which was my team's primary robot for Turning Point, which actually did perform pretty well. Another interesting thing is that the robot only uses six motors. This means that you can have two extra motors for whatever you want. If you want another set of rollers to help you intake scored balls better, then you can do that, or even just go with a six motor drive so you can push everyone else around. Obviously, this isn't a perfect robot, there's a lot of flaws that are going to need to be fixed, but it can be made better, and I think it is a relatively good proof of concept. For the next iteration, I'm planning on trying to get the output at the front of the bot, so both the intake and the output are on the same side. But that will involve building a mess of different rollers and stuff, so that will likely take quite a while. Another problem I need to solve is with the intaking, where it'll sometimes just go and push the balls away. One potential solution is having another set of rollers out front to help guide the balls in more, but I don't know if that'll fix it. The other problem is the rollers will desync every once in a while, which can toss the ball to either the left or the right. I could add some flip-out guides to solve this, or I could maybe try and add some extra sprockets or gears to sync the whole thing up. In the meantime, you should check out my videos explaining my team's robots from Tower Takeover and Turning Point, as both of them share similarities with this year. Also be sure to check out Blast Wave, my one-pound combat robot. I have a new iteration coming soon, so be sure to check out how it performed at its first competition. Thanks for watching, and keep designing. By the way, maybe don't try to intake a cube, because that could definitely break something.